What's this body of water about? Is there mega pressure? What, how am I going to adjust if this place has tons of pressure? Am I going to show up on the August full moon when everybody's there and then throw a cowgirl? Maybe. And is it possible to catch a big fish? Yes. But, why not go there with something? Uh, what is it about the French that makes it? It's a killer. It's a killer. It's not, you know, it's not like the Quartz is obviously where people can go and get a fish on any given day. The Quartz is a set, they have set, I'm sorry, the French has sent a lot of good fish and pack in Absolutely. Like, like, you, like you said, I mean, uh, you get ministers there. We do this everywhere we go. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there for at least, yeah. Whatever, four or five days. Yeah, there's so many guys go there. Either they, they hit a rock with their boat or. Oh, that happened. Yeah, there one. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, it was before I bought my boat. <laughs> that happens uh, a Wait, lot. Like just... I'm a guy, and uh, I've had a lot of boats. And I just put a bottom end of my boat. I didn't even hit it. So, oh just maybe I'm cursed as a guy. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I think I'm cursed. I'm just like the good luck charms and days. Except for in my boat. Exactly. Like break motors and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a tough place, man. I mean, it's a pattern. It's a river. It's, it's got a definite pattern. And if you wake up every day, you pattern it. Right. Now, you, you know, know after this happens, you, you keep getting luck. You see these trends. It's a trend, yeah. The luck. Well, it is a lot of luck. It's always yeah. luck. Yeah. But uh, you can base a lot of your strategies of that day. Right. Oh, what you're going to do. Yeah. So what, uh, what can you do I mean, uh, to increase your chances? If you, had, if you could give one piece of advice. Best thing, is it a color thing? Is it a paying attention to the the moon cycle thing? Is it a, I mean, what's it's all over it's it's the context, context, context you said. Yeah. Study the context before you get out there. Oh, you always yeah. Yeah. understand as much as you can about the water. I mean, I, I, I like fishing charter waters. Well, you don't fish charter I don't, but I am. Because that part, this is the biggest this is the biggest thing. It is charted. Fucking, isn't the middle right where Shadir Lodge is not charted? Charted. Okay, so the lower yeah, lower is the base. Yeah, what's the base on? What's the base? Not. Not. Okay. But you don't go in that section. I, I fish a lot. I start, like, believe it or not, that upper section of the French, that's the last section of the French I ever fished. I started on the lower. Oh, really? My grandfather had this. So I got him fishing. I was a kid. So I started there, uncharted, just with an instructor, just by his old techniques. Then the main channel, then the main, and then boom, the electronics comes out, put a chip in, and boom, off your own. I, you know, I always thought that the bigger fish were in, in the, in the yeah. upper where the, where the shot here is, because those were fish that would be migratory from Nipissing, and the fish that are in the lower are residential fish that don't have to see the big thing. Is that even true? There might be some truth to it. The thing is, if you look at the colors, you're on to something. You're on to something totally. I am? I mean, I am. <laughs> uh, the color definitely. Yeah. It's students. I'm looking at lower French fish. The green bass are called. You're so green. Yeah, I, that's my, that's what I look for. Well, me not so much, but definitely the main channel of the world, the French. You can have a fish in there. They're dark. They got this this great green back. I love them. Yeah. So that was like a silvery green, like a metallic green. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool looking fish. Yeah. Look at that but yeah, you're right. Maybe uh, that's I guess it's resident. I mean. Where are they going to go? That's what I'm saying. I always thought that they're, that they're going to go down because they, they're going to go down. But I doubt they come up because Reckley Falls is that's the junction of main channel into the lower French. Right. That those sort of falls. Uh, nothing to be so okay. So tell me about the other side of the highway that that links up into Georgian Bay eventually. Yeah, that's the Delta. Yeah. Now, as a future cottage buyer. Yeah. Is it? Is that not a great place? Amazing. Well, Amazing. Lots of boat only access places out there. And, and the only place you dump it is by the bay. So, okay, so is there a shit ton of fish there? Because, or, or theoretically, I mean, it's uncharted. Not a lot of pressure. Uncharted. Right? It's, uncharted. Yeah. it's uncharted. Yeah. And not, like, there can't be a lot of pressure because it's not very accessible. I wouldn't say that because yeah. every cottage is yeah. cottage. So yeah, I mean, it's gonna have a certain amount of pressure just from. Both cruising around, which I don't think maybe that doesn't make a difference. Yeah. But you gotta think like yeah, like Bears Den Lodge, that's a 
from the destination. Every choice angler, musky especially. Den Lodge? Yeah. It's been around since I've heard like it. the 50s or something. I think I got lost and ended up in front of, is it, is it blue? Is the writing blue or something? Um, Green or something? Uh, I remember being lost one day in front of a lodge going, you know, anyways. It's on the main stretch, so I mean, oh, yes. okay. yeah, you, you can get lost in very easily. Well, the main stretch is not so bad. Man. No, yeah. but it is gnarly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a cool place to buy cottage. Yeah. You buy one there? On, on Hardly Bay. On Hardly Bay? Yeah, like Lower French, right? Yeah. The Delta, yeah. Cool. I'd like to get up there one day and stay up there. So, are you taking any trips this year or are you just focusing on the French? Um, I don't know. Never know. Are you saying you're from out west? I work out west a lot. So, you're originally from here, uh, Ontario? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm an Iron Worker, so what happens is I just I pick jobs where I chase the oil money and the mining money. And then you fish on the side? <laughs> And then do the guiding on the side, or you yeah, you got guiding when I can. My buddy owns uh, Shawnee Air Lodge. Who's your buddy? Yeah. What's his name? Steve. Uh, Steve. Steve Nisbet. Steve. Uh, Steve treated us really well. Steve really knows how to run. He's a joint. Yeah. Yeah. And even though he lost that uh, foosball to me, uh, oh, did he? Steve. You I did. Actually, and I hadn't played in about 15 years. Steve, That's I hope he beats you one day. Because he beats me all the time. Well, he beat me the he's next bad, game. Right? He's like, he beat me in the next game by, but but we allowed passing in the front. So anytime I play like small children or women, we allow <laughs> passing in the front. And uh, he did a good, fine, fine job that way. So Steve, buddy, thank you. But I'll tell you what, hell of a lodge. Hell of a yeah, lodge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of the location, I love it. I got my ass handed to me there, but I knew there was fish there because I touched it. When did you guys hold it? What, what month was it? Uh, it was August. In August. It can be a tough month. It can be a tough month. Yeah, yeah. but we weren't. We were just getting into the throes of musky addiction. And we weren't truly appreciative of let's frit fish when we're freezing. First time in a new place. First time in a new yeah. place. Uh, I remember the boat you guys were in. Like it was. You couldn't go too far either, right? I don't remember the boat even. Or were your buddies? Uh, that's the thing. The, oh yeah. The forty or something on the back. Things boat. The, the, yeah, yeah, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, yeah. part? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit, I don't remember this. I don't know. This was like, no, yeah. two years ago, and we <laughs> let's just say we had a good time that night. I, mean, I don't think I remember the next the next day what happened the night before, but yeah, we were in this. Geez, he must have brought his boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't have a shot in your boat. How was Dave? Right. Dave's doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, Dave's yeah he's good dude. When you know, I got on Facebook. He posts up once in a while, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, when you know someone, like, we've known each other our whole lives, so you know. Okay, cool. How is it? Just, everything's always the same. Yeah, yeah. See each other. And, cool. But uh, that was one of the gateway trips, and like we had our friends with us, and, and sometimes the guys that aren't hooked, you don't want to be in a boat in October. You no. know what I mean? No, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. No, for 10 hours, so. Unless you. Uh, unless you. Uh, have a rain soon. Hey! Or the pot. We're sitting here with the Slobland Flix crew. These guys uh, are some of the first, if not the first, musky oriented multimedia uh, effort personalities, if you will. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a lot of words. <laughs> Part of the, words. <laughs> Part of the reason why I, uh, why I, you know, wanted to get involved in. You know, podcasts and putting little movies together and the stuff. Because I've been watching your guys' stuff for years. And uh, love your, that you your guys videos do. are awesome. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, you never know who you're influencing, right? There's just, if you want to watch something that's not going to bore you to death about muskies and have some fun and you're surfing at night and have a couple drinks or whatever, your videos are. That's it, man. There's not a lot of drinks there. with us. <laughs> Who's, uh, yeah, so why you guys just, so I, so I, I got a try on, got, uh, about a year ago, he invited me out to Slob Staff, and, uh, just realistically, we're on the water so much, the one thing we have in common is we just want to catch big muscles. Like, 40s, 50, you know, 45s, 48s, they're unbelievable fish, but we're like, we're not even taking photos of these fish anymore. That's like, insane. Like when they're 52, we're like, okay, let's get a photo. I still take photos. Wow. We pull, no, we, we pull them off the camera. So like 44, we'll pull it off the camera. We don't, we don't 
we, we'll pull off the GoPro. We don't pull out a camera and get stills right. until they're in that high 40 level of the sure. and you It spoils you. Uh, the water is <laughs> unreal, and we just, we love it. So you guys were obviously uh, didn't start with muscle fishing. Like most of us, we all started doing whatever yeah. bass. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you develop the muscle addiction? Well, like me, I'm a weird story. Like I'm from San Diego. I, what? Yeah. So I moved here. Grassland district. My wife's Canadian, right. and, and I said, "Honey, if we don't move to Canada so that I can fish muscle a hundred days a year, I'm like, we're getting right. So you lived in San Diego <laughs> yeah, at one point, life. and your addiction was up here. Yeah. So I, uh, I can totally like, relate. 2001, my my mom and I actually wow, right. went up to northern Ontario and fished muscle, and I just felt like it. So every year after that, I was fishing muscle, and I saved a lot of fun. And meeting these guys has been huge for me because like, when you start, you know, you're, everybody's at this high level. When you start talking about tactics and things that you do, you all benefit each other. It's, my, my own game has gone up tremendously just from knowing that Kyle and Pete, Andrew. Like, you know, I'll hear something Andrew or Pete does, and I'm like, I want to do that. You know, and, and then boom, you do it and you start doing it. You're amazing. You know? Awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, Gotta ask who's got the biggest fish at the table. Not me, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of, it's gotta be a Yeah, it's gotta be a Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Slotland himself. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 This is Slot Man. You know, this whole thing just came out of Did like, you start this? Yeah. Yeah. I got an Apple computer, saw the video oh, editing, saw it, started pissing around with it. And I'm literally in, in like 30 seconds. I'm like, what should I call this video? I actually use a template on the app. Oh, yeah. yeah. The first video. My wife's like, I I'm like, oh, slot. it's called Slot Win. And that's like literally 30 seconds of my time. That video got like 2,000 views in like the first month. And then it just exploded. And it's just. I, I literally started videotaping just so that I could see myself catching fish. Sure, yeah. The photo does no justice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we, started, we started videotaping almost 20 years ago. Yeah, just with by, cameras. Like, with random, with, like, with gar picture you know, cameras. Yeah, garbage notes. cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a video on there, like, it's a vintage section. It's, it's brutal. <laughs> but uh, but at the same time, it's, <laughs> we did. We have, like, 50 pounders almost. Eight you know, millimeter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brian and I, we, we sat down one day here a couple of years and said, man, like, we drew a boat up on a piece of paper and we said, we gotta have a camera here, 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 a camera here. and then next thing you know, we're like, okay, then GoPros came out, and we this this idea of GoPros, so, yeah, 1080p, yeah. you know, and then the next thing you know, we're all day long, yeah, run them all day long, make it And we ran into that battery issue. That you just ran into. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went down to Ohio, met some guys from Ohio, and these guys, they fish all year long. Yeah. So they're on top of like, their tanks. So what's the workaround? So they showed me, they're like, oh, just charge it all day. And you never have to worry about that. So you just plug micro USB and micro USB into a power pack. You never have to worry about it. All day long. Power pack. You, 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 you put it in the back pocket. Yeah, so you can charge, charge that. Right? You can boost your car. No, no, yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> you just got to be it's careful. It's amazing. You got to be careful because yeah, cool. you, I, there's always that shot with the camera under the water. If you get a power pack, you don't want to oh, put yeah, yourself. Oh, you got to have a separate camera. Oh, oh right. You got to keep the That will work. I own four GoPros myself. Yeah, yeah. And then he comes by. Oh, he's got one or two more. Oh, like, we got six, seven GoPros. And the important thing to remember is you're only using that underwater shot after you have a fish. Yeah. So that camera's off until you need it. So sure. that, you only need a battery in the waterproof case. Right. So this year, I said, I'm so tired of battery packs. I just I bought a USB waterproof charger that I installed in the dash of my boat. So I just plug right into the dash of my boat and plug it into the camera and runs the whole time. So and, uh, it's the camera forever. It has to be plugged in for the camera to be running, right? That's you right. You don't have your batteries, right? No, no, the batteries, the batteries in the camera. camera. So if you disconnect, it stays on. Yeah. 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 Because it's fully, it's basically fully it's charging. The whole it's time. charging. Yeah. Yeah. So you're just maintaining a full battery. No, you know, the you know, problem is, is when it's raining and you're tired. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Right. Yeah. That's right. Right. yeah. I don't even care if you tell me I'm out of So you have to have like a hundred batteries. That's a dollar. So that's five bucks. Like that's a. Well, you'll spend it on. Oh yeah. You'll spend it on. You'll spend it on memory cards. Because now you can roll. You know. Wow. And you guys run losing. Unbelievable. You know, if you're running on the. Or whatever, no, it's like some 
So, so, so when, Yeti. we're not close. Yeti. Sure, but everyone is listening is astounded by it, and I know we're not the best USB mic. So you just plug it in, turn on GarageBand, and it's working. Don't really, right? You don't have to do anything. Just input in, and it automatically recognizes it. You listen. You guys have to come down to Maxi Falls because, like, we have like we got a studio. We've got like sundown. We've got <laughs> Niagara, Niagara River. Soul. <laughs> you can make it sure you have me at home. <laughs> <laughs> have me at home. Oh, oh, I've got a list of the ugly pie. It's a Bible group. That's right. What you guys are talking about. It's like, it's a group. The cup's deteriorating right now from all the alcohol. If if the if the audience <laughs> not as tough as my gut. <laughs> if, if the audience is right into the you know the whole musty in the filming, it is important to talk about that looping feature. Because remember you could do the, the reason I say is you made you made a comment a minute ago that says you're ripping through memory cards. Yeah. yeah. But the looping, anything from a GoPro Hero 3 or up has what's called looping. You can set it for a five minute, ten minute, or twenty minute loop. What happens is we set it on 20, and you just hit go. Remember, we're plugged into a battery charger, right. which is going to go all day. Sure. The memory card, instead of wasting all the memory on three hours of footage, it's it. As it, it, as it records, oh. it deletes the end. As soon as you get the footage you want, stop, and there's your first clip. That's Start it. another clip. So when you have an extra terabyte of data, yeah. you yes. have a terabyte a data card, a terabyte, and then you have and you unlimited. Load it every day. So you, yeah, so then you unload it. But when you get that fish and you stop the recording and then you start again, it, it, the loop it, starts from that point yes. on. Yes, well, yeah. it records when you. It keeps when you, you have, have number one clip saved. Save. That's, that's 20 it. minutes is saved. Yeah. When you click so it, it's really awesome. good. You know, that's it. Maybe 10, 5 minutes before the fish while you're handling it, and maybe 5 minutes after, that's all you need. Yeah. And if something funny happens in the boat, we always, I was, which is all enter, enter. Yes. Like, my cow is hilarious, we're going to say that. Yeah, yeah. Enter, enter. Or whatever. Cool. Cool. Because it'll save the previous 20 minutes. Yeah. And then when you hit go again, that 20 minutes is forever saved on the card. So by the time you get home, you offload it. But if nothing ever happens, you only have 20 minutes footage to file. That's it? Yeah. Instead of hours. hours. I could have used that. I was in a. I was on a trip, I was up at Eagle Lake last year, and for whatever reason, uh, something happened, my external drive was corrupted, and I couldn't interface my GoPro with my laptop, so I had a week on Eagle Lake, and I had one memory card, didn't know how to use it, so it's like, like, it was the most valuable of, like, seconds, <laughs> right? Because you can't go through the little thing and edit, because you don't no. know, yeah. and you're trying to look, so it's just like, this better be good, or, you know, okay, put a top light around, okay, record a top light around. Of course, I've never. Yeah, I can't tell you all that way. So I'm sitting there with like five, ten minutes of top water. Our second podcast session. We have somebody come in. We do this long interview. We take a break. We start again. We fucking started the record from the beginning and raised the whole thing. No. Our second uh, podcast. We lost. Oh, just, uh, just, uh, a lot of work. Look at Yeah, you just now you learn, right? Now yeah, it's yeah, like, we're fishermen. That's, we're just fishing. Yeah, yeah, we're not technical. Not technical geniuses. I'm a roofer. I <laughs> can <laughs> 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 You gotta I mean, I make the music. Well, here's my story is I, I, I went to school for engineering, worked at an engineering firm, lost my mind in four walls, and just went out and did construction. So I have the background. I used to do AutoCAD like crazy. So when I saw this, we had a lot of fun with this industry. I saw the editing program, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know about it. So it went from there. Yeah. I, this is pretty cool. I like that. I like how you guys are going on. The podcast is a neat idea. Especially yeah. you guys, uh, the background that you have set up in the uh, yeah, I, I studio. I just like, bought the house uh, a couple years ago. It's very cool, man. When I moved in, they were like, what is this? They had a, a workout studio or something. I'm like, Frank, this is the perfect spot for us to do this. We've got a we whole podcast. Like, but a lot of people are into it now. I hear it all the time. Why not? Like, Why not? We're just starting out. We haven't even started broadcasting yet. But when we do, we're hoping we're going to get good feedback. You know? Yeah, for, for, for fishermen too. Like, if you're on a long drive and you're going, yeah. you know, 10, 12 hours, you know, there's sometimes, like, I'm not a music guy. I, I, I like a few bands and that's it. But podcasts is stuff we love. Oh, yeah. 1.5 like, speed. That is the knee every like five, six, <laughs> six, <laughs> six, <laughs> You know what I mean? But podcasts, you can get a USB. Most normal, you know, new cars now will have a standard USB jack. And 
You yeah. download your cast and you, you throw it or you put them on your phone yeah. and you just Bluetooth through yeah. and you know I'll listen to Rogan for yeah. when I'm flying. Oh, I think was, uh, Rogan's Rogan. a beauty though. Like, but he's he's three <laughs> hours <laughs> each and you know three of his podcasts and I'm in Los Angeles. He's got an incredible podcast. Yeah, he's got some stuff. You know what's great? We're watching people come by on like, all the older generation like, podcasts. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys doing? I don't. We're like, you want to sit down, talk? Uh, that's not my thing, man. I'm gonna run from this like that. <laughs> <laughs> Big microphones. What, you got a warrant for your arrest or something? You worry we're going to put you All you're doing is hanging out. That's it. That's it. That's all we're doing. It's about hanging around. It is cool. And there, we, you know, these podcasts, we have some good guests. And, you know, we've gone off on some tangents that may one day cost us sponsors. But, uh, you know, we want to just make it a comfortable place where people can listen and pretend like they're sitting with their buddies and maybe even learn something in the process. Yeah. 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 So, for sure. Yeah. So, I did either, right? Oh, yeah. Just sitting and talking to you, learned a few things today. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and the video tips, and that's, that's a game changer. Oh, little things go yeah. a long way. It's all, it's all just trial and error. Yeah. You're like, fuck me. This is pissing me off. And then you find a solution. Yeah. And then something else pisses you off. And also learn from each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. Each other well, fishing each other with each other every day. You guys can all That's where we got it. To know we each are, other. for sure. Especially like this electronics. Me, Pat, and Matt, for sure. Like, throw electronics shit. Back and forth like crazy. So are you tweaking there? Do you guys all guides? Do you guys all guide in your spare time? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> We've all guided here and there. He's full time, Matt's part time. I'm full time. Semi time. Semi, I pick and choose. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm on that board too. Same too. I, I got that. I got that from you before. That uh, sometimes, but here's the problem with guiding for me. You know, I've got 20 years on these bodies of water and I'm just taking away for $600. Like, I get it, you could say, but at the same time, I'd rather fish with my buddies. Yeah. And anyway, it sounds a little bit ignorant, but no, it does. I don't know. No, especially not for musky. It's, we it's, a tough, it's a tough game. Like Georgia Bay, same well, day, I'll, I'll give you my icon, because that place is a nightmare. But other bodies of water I fish, <laughs> if you're not as tuned in as I am, yeah. you're like, from me to that tree away, <laughs> you're not catching fish. Half kilometer away. No, power no, that tree. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 If your boat's there and my boat's here, guess what? You're not catching shit. Yeah. And if you're driving at it from the north, you're not catching shit because they only eat when the boat's going from the south. Little details right. like that. Sure. Right? Yeah. Georgia Bay is a toy down here. Yeah, it's a shit show, like you said. <laughs> yeah, we've talked to enough people that uh, <laughs> you can like the best of the best get their asses to hand it. Yeah, yeah. A, a friend of ours, Pete, who's been on our podcast actually already. He, uh, he said he was still the <laughs> He swears the next record is come on Georgia. I mean, that's what you said for 15 years. Or a lot of guys said that. There's not enough guys there that are doing the right thing. That's the problem. Listen, if you put 20 Lazaruses out there yeah. every day, yeah. you're going to get a world record probably within five years. But there's only one Lazarus. Right. And there's a lot of water. And there's a lot of guys who are damn good that are fishing it, but I can count them on my hands. The guys that are damn good at fishing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's tough to find. I've got nothing to five years in my life. And he's got college on and, and, I, and I have a place on there. And I thought, and like, all the time, you think you know nothing. And it takes a long time. 15 years. And I know 50% of what I should have. So do you do you go back there and fish and catch at all? Oh, you do. Well, yeah, 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 you do. Yeah, I'm going to live there, but so now yeah. it's, it's, it's all, it's a matter of timing. Actually, we should invite these guys up for the show. Yeah, you learn the timing. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, we're 20 yeah, years of fishing, you're, you're like, like I don't think you're going to between now and now. Yeah, I'm looking at my effort to between now and now. Exactly. You know what? Don't touch it for this reason and go back. We're on the Niagara. Very unhospitable. It's very, very it's really inhospitable. It's uh, it's tough. We're learning every year we do better. But you know what? And I know damn well if it's the first week in August, I probably shouldn't be on the <laughs> But you go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. How else am I going to get the pain between my shoulders and, you know, the back aches? The, the At the very burn. least, you can mark out your spots. Yeah, yeah, and Perfectly. we can sight fish there, so we can see the fish. I can see the fish at 20 feet on the So it is amazing. It's, it's amazing, it's fun watching a fish from a long distance engage your lure. 
and the process and the dance. And that's something you don't see in every water because it's not gin clear, but on the right day, um, you, we see, have you guys ever seen a muskie swimming outside up, up dog paddling on the surface? I had a muskie look at me one time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we saw it this year. Looked, looked at me and said, yeah. Fuck you. That's what that's what I, mean. I swear to God, though, I, I'm not even kidding. It didn't, say, it didn't say fuck Where's you. It? <laughs> no, but it's like his eyeballs out. Dude, he turned his fucking head. I'm Where? Not, on the back. And I looked at Matt like, did you just like this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Ask him about it, but I'm not even around. And he will say, have you ever seen a monster? I might even actually heard that story from Matt, actually. Water, and I guarantee you. Don Paddle, <laughs> we saw him coming to the boat. I said to my buddy, what the hell is that? And he's like, uh, I thought it was a dead fish. Yeah. You know, something <laughs> And then he gets closer, and you see the eyes, the little beady eyes, and they're looking at you. Want to grab Yeah, I'm going to grab Here, No, was, well, I'm gonna, uh, I got some. I didn't even know if he did that, but. They're curious animals, that's for sure. And they're ball busters too, apparently. It's like a cat in fish form. Yeah. They're swimming. Yeah. And they're, they're apex predators, and cats are, you know, everybody laughs at cats, but cats are ruthless killers. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's all they, they're born, they were, yeah. they're, they're, they're hunters. That's they're all hunters. they do. They're like when they, they wake up, they like kill something, and they shit. Even a house cat that's fed, it's like, I'm going to go kill something. Let me also go kill something. Yeah, yeah. And the muskies, I guess, a lot like that, eh? I don't know. Troublesome. And you guys fly fish for muskies? No. I took. I, a, I guided a guy once that wanted to. Remember the, the guy from uh, Norway? Yeah, that's a big guy from Norway. No, well, you were there. Yeah. A Norway guy from uh, in that, the pride. Oh, the Swedish bab. bab. Swedish bab. 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 Oh, yeah. So he wanted, he wanted her, he was like insisting on her. Like, you know, like, it's a really terrible day. We had like two days of rain or something like that. Just, ah. So we can do it, I don't care. I took him out. And uh, <laughs> talk. <laughs> I actually we lost it. Anytime you want. Just saying. Do you have a picture? Do you have a picture? Do you have a It's a terrible idea, man. My buddy was out there giving her, man. Yeah, he's yeah, he hauling ass on it. Put him on a few good spots. Oh, it's like hard, part of the problem is like we're casting so far to stay off the spot. It's yeah. a cool lure zone. Well, you're limited on the fly. You yeah. just can't cast. I can, I'm sorry. I, I can cast a bait on my rod and reel farther than you can fly. Like. So, but in the Niagara, you've got some areas like 10 foot depth, you can sight the fish. Yes, it's different, yeah. I'm not able to just drive around and be like, oh, there's one, yeah. there's one, there's yeah. one. Okay, now let's go set up a drift and go hammer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, that's a cool. That's, what, that's what we do. Are you guys fishing Erie at all? The lake? A little bit. I, I don't uh, have any trolling uh, rig on my boat. My boat is relatively new. So I, yeah, I you just bought one, right? Yeah, I need to get... Go yeah, because Dave. I'm like... I, what's that? Go see Dave Dutch. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, not an impact. Uh, the one that before the impacts. Tiny? Explore. So, 18 foot Explore. Oh. Yeah. 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 I see Dutch Act, he'll, he'll build you a system. I just was just talking to him. Oh, I had to walk away because we all fucking broke talking to him. <laughs> but he's got the, the nice systems that go into the tracks yes. and I don't have to screw them in. Yes. And I'm actually going to go uh, buy some before I leave. Oh, he's not a Don't, 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 yeah. buy, them. Oh, he's don't buy them here. Call him up after the show. Take your boat to the yeah. 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 And he'll bring it up. He might have taken his ass a couple times. Yeah. Just so he can measure everything out and radio out. Tell him what you want, awesome. but he'll set it up for me. That's sweet. That's good advice. If you ever saw my boat, you want to blow your load. The boomerang. He's got this boat. Uh, what's his name? Steve Gallagher. He's got the uh, boomerang. Yeah. Whatever yeah. 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 you love. I don't know. Thank you. Well, you have arranged out there on the display. Cheers, boys. Cheers. Cheers. That's awesome. Mike Ross has been dragged. Mike made for Mike oh, Ross. I saw those for choice. Yeah, well, he's got the boomerangs for his everyday people. Yeah, but Mike Ross is a boomerang. From a Titanic runner, Mike Ross. Or he's got you know, Mike Ross. a high beam on that knee. So they don't vibrate. It's just a thin piece of metal. They do vibrate. Mike Not Ross is a high beam. That's a good idea. idea. No, Great. Rosses are on you now. Well, the spring loaded way you were on his yeah. Titanic is disgusting. I want to start Erie and Lake Erie Patrol. I, I haven't yet, but I want to. You should. you got to be there, man. Yeah. I, I've You're right there. a lot of guys today, and everyone I ask is, is a night I'm, I'm going to start fishing in the lake next year. And then I talk to one guy who fishes in the lake. What are you just telling me? 
Yeah, we know. We're, we're hearing the stories and we're right there. And, and uh, I just read who uh, Candy guy? Candy guy, I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I'm serious. I can't remember. I pulled out my phone. Pulled out my phone. Turn around there, Jeff. Cheers, guys. Hi. Guys, turn around. Hi. Hi. Love and life. One more. Smile, right. smile. You, you need a bigger phone. Thank you. Jeez. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. I have sick phone. Well, yeah. oh, maybe yours is bigger. Broken where's, Dave, where's Dave located? He's Burlington. He's in Burlington. I'm going to. I'm going to. And we'll get up to here even before the fall. I won't do it for the summer. There's too many weeds. Yeah, so when uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to. <laughs> easy, easy, Kyle. Kyle, easy. There's too many no, weeds. No, no, no. The, we're sorry. The bus no, 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 no. We we have uh, in the upper Niagara we have uh, the weed floats parallel parallel to the ground and it floats all the way towards the bottom. Oh, I, I thought you meant the lake. That's not what I meant. No, I meant uh, it's really really easy to get piled. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, there's a couple of weeks. It's really not artificial at all. So my suggestion is going to the lake and find weeds. Muskies are 99.999% related structure and weeds, they're there. If there's no weeds, then they'll use just, just the rock. If there's no weeds, they'll use the yeah, we know where, where some of the weed beds are there, so we just got to gear up and uh, that's good advice. I'll get up there. And I want to get in there. I've never even been there, but... I got it. Just because it's a great time. I was thinking well, about it. If you guys ever made it down, I'll, I'll, I'll get the barrel to you. I'll get the barrel for you, huh? If you don't want to bring a boat, then we can jump in mine. You know? Where uh, how far are you looking at? He's not here. I live in Niagara on the Lake. I live right on the lower. He lives right on the upper. So that's why I literally you guys come down, I'll get you in the studio, then we'll go fishing. Well, we're definitely going to have a certain I'm taking my boat, though. Do you fish a lot? I shore fish a lot. Yeah, no choice. What's that? Hills. No. Dude, the lore is the most unbelievable. I've never fished it. It's incredible. Yeah. I've never fished it. I know the there, I've never fished it. But every yeah, lake, we'll lake can be uh, we'll pretty, pretty treacherous too, right? Oh, yeah. We're going for, uh, we'll, we'll be Lakers. going for trout. Lakers, yeah. Rainbows. Uh, Browns? Rainbows, Rainbows Browns. Big brownies in there, huge yeah. lakes. So we saw guys trolling the mud slick on, uh, on the way here. Oh, yeah. We're watching guys trolling out there. Yeah, I've seen that on the rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've seen that. The Jordan? Uh, yeah, the big one. Oh, yeah, up from there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Pebbly Beach is called, you know where the Glen is? Right down right there. Right across from the Whirlpool. Right down there. I'm going down here to watch it. I'm going out to try to go back. You know the Whirlpool? You've heard the Whirlpool, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it's, 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 if you ever get a chance to shore fish there, it's incredible. And then if you just keep going downstream from that, there's a good stretch where you can just drift. Oh, well, we're talking to Niagara River. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah the talking. Whirlpool's just past the bottom. I thought you were yeah. talking coming up on the highway at the mouth yes. of Jordan. That's oh, where I no, saw yeah. it. That's a good spot too. The mouth is that big baby. Yeah, yeah. They were out there. There was a, it spits out all the mud, and there's a huge mud line. Yeah, yeah. They were just trolling yeah. the edge of the mud line. Ridiculous. That mud line's huge too. Like it's in St. Clair, guys live and die by that mud line. Yeah. I put there's no nice, structure. Yeah. I pull a nice brownie out of the bar, fishing the mud line. Yeah. What's going on right now in there? Uh, yeah, the brownies. Brownies. They're not on the bar. Lakers on the bar. This is every tall year. I, I don't. I don't fish there in, during musky season. Yeah. But before musky season, absolutely on the bar. Yeah. I primarily short fish. Uh, the thing with the bar is that the current is really temperamental. The waves are really temperamental. So you could be out there and it's great, and then two seconds later, you get You get wind against current. I've been out there, wind against current. It's not it to rocks. Yeah, and it's has to Didn't you and O'Brien get Lakers on plows? Plows, yeah. Oh! No, no. Perch baits. Was it perch baits? He says plows. Plows. Perch baits. We're out there trying to catch muskie. Yeah, the rods going off the Lakers on perch baits. On the bar. Yeah, perch Hammering Lakers. So I saw at your setup, you had a bunch of lures and stuff. Do you guys manufacture that stuff, or are you just I make, sell them for people? I make the blacktails, and everything else is like slobland, exclusive colors that guys paint up. Oh, so you work yeah, together with the manufacturer, you come up with the design. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, like the blue body type that yes. only we have. Right? Yeah. Have you guys used the, the triple blade? I have. Yeah, yeah. the Apache. Everybody I talked to here said that it's, it's out produced. First of all, double blade. Yeah. They just said they love it. It's less resistance, I don't know. I didn't like it that much because I fish on a lot of wind most times. And it catches a ton of wind in your cast. 
and it passes. But it's the the water is unbelievable. My whole thing is the nastier the weather where I fish, catch. the more I catch on shallow structure. So if I can't cast it, I don't touch it. That's funny. But it's not to say that that bait's not going to catch fish. Yeah. Then there's those, uh, what, what are they called? The ones that have two different size blades. Oh, sound science. Sound science, now you guys know. So the theory is you have like a number, say 10, in, um, probably Colorado, Colorado, and then you have a little blade with it. Yeah. So it just throws the beat off, and it's all it's changing the vibration. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And apparently it outfishes the normal <coughs> size of the, uh, the same. Two to one. Why is the one that I can remember most? I was going to make some for the show, but I'm just going to make it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> My whole thing is me really getting as many fish as possible. Most important. Most important. Most important. <laughs> Like or, no, as long as it's in my boat. I told him that one time. Oh, I thought he was mad at me. <laughs> so, so it's kind of a funny story because like the first time I ever finished with Kyle Garrow, right? Like I know him, I met him through that, but I've, I've never been in the boat with him. I met him, you know, at the shore or whatever. You know, well, so, we're, so we go out there and he catches a fish and it's like, good, good start to the day. And we go out and I catch another one. And I'm, uh, I catch one. So we've got two, everything's good. We've each got one. I catch another one. And, it was 51, I think. Uh, and then sweet. like, and then it's like, it, this is all in the first three hours of the first day. So now we get nothing the rest of the day. You love telling the story about it. It's an amazing story. <laughs> it's the only, it's, it's, it's the only time I've ever outfished it, so I love it, right? So we go like the rest of the day with nothing. And then like the following day, and there's this idiot trolling like, so fast around us, it's all there. It's, it's super late in the season. Like, yeah, super late. and we're just, it's like summer speed trolling and saying he's catching giants. So I'm like, no. But whatever, so Good so Kyle, it, it, like, the, the, the second, like the, it's like a yeah. day two. It's, it's yeah, day I'm, at, I'm at the podcast. Kyle goes, God, like, I want to catch Wait, every quarter. fish in my boat <laughs> because we saw the guy catch Wait, a fish. We, we I saw you're, you're competitive, eh? Yeah. Well, Bro, listen, 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 this story. It's, it's funny because yeah, that's what I tell like, oh, 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 shit. Right I'm like, I'm putting my rod down. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like sitting no, down, no. and he's like, what are you doing? Come I'm like, oh, I'm just taking a break, man. Like, Come by here if you want. Yeah, I'm sit in. And he meant it like, his boat was to catch all the fish. Because we had just watched that other boat that was driving like 100 miles an yeah, yeah. hour. We catch watched them catch fish. Uh, so like, some words. He's like, every fish I want in my boat. I want to, I want to catch every fish in my boat. I'm like, but realistically, I'd rather not because I know. Yeah, you won't lose if it. If I fuck him up. That's a weird I can't remember ever fucked up a good job. It's okay because I can't yell at myself. That's the only good thing about guiding. That's the only good thing about guiding. The only good thing about guiding is that feature. You never yes. Yeah, you know. Very they rarely. all get in the net. Yeah. Oh, it's just a bad hookup. Wow. Well, if you're in that, if you're in that man, you like yeah. that's a major. Of course. Could be a great rule. <laughs> Fuck up, really. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. If you're the oh. one scooping, the chances are that, it's like it's like being almost ten. Yeah. Like a boxing. So the Night Walker by Sue, this is one of my, it, it's only been out for a while, but this is actually one of my favorites now. Um, other than the, the top here that I showed you is a fantastic uh, prop bait, but one of the uh, one of the things about the, the Night Walker, it seems to put off a lot more splash and a lot more pump. Sitting at the table with John Romanelli. If you're a musky fisherman and you don't know John Romanelli, then you're not a part of the Musky Canada Association, which will contribute great, greatly to your uh, frustrations on the water. So, um, a great group of people. John, thanks for coming. Well, I'm just glad that I'm here and Holzer, uh, and Sean, uh, Holes Bates is not here. Um, <laughs> the, the important thing is I'm here, he's leaping. Tony Belushi's packing us. If he had hair like mine, he wouldn't be jealous. Hey, you got enough hair for everybody. I, well, I'll sound words, buddy. Give some to Galooch, too. Yeah, yeah Galooch has been packing up for an hour. As you can see, we're, we're all packing up now to leave uh, the show, and you can see it's chaos. Yes, I was very disturbed to see one of the vendors take American Express, and so I did some damage because I didn't have enough money in my pocket. So. 
But it was, uh, you talked to me about this uh, participation in the uh, attendance this year, and what, what do you see? Well, I thought the attendance this year was great. Um, I've been to many uh, uh, odysseys, obviously. Now, this is my first as president. Um, this is a uh, every two year event. So obviously we don't have one next year. But uh, what I can tell you is, this is probably the most, ad most advanced um, show we've done, meaning that the dealers have probably the nicest gear. The Unbelievable. nicest gear. Like, you know, like there's so much heart put into it. You know, I saw six hundred dollar lures there. Yeah. Yes. And there are people. There's a market for people that can use a lure like that. I'm not one of them. But uh, obviously, they have more than just that. But I mean, like, I would be afraid to scratch them. Yeah, and I, I almost wouldn't want to push to hit it. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, it's, you, it's like artwork, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, you know what? You said it. It's, it's You've been talking about that. Yeah. Some of these big trolling baits are just so beautiful to look at. And now, speaking of the vendors, and uh, we mentioned this earlier, but it's easy to say, oh, that was $200. That was $150. Kind of but also, when you talk to these guys, I mean, you understand. And two, three day process, sometimes longer. These guys are really pouring everything they have to do. The whole show is going to see them. It's nothing like online. You got to come and see these trades. We see it as an investment. An investment into the. Is that the past? Yeah, trust me. I just don't show it, but it's our receipt. Right. Well, I bought some things today. I probably spent around 500. Okay. Which is a lot. Yeah. Like there were guys from thousand, two thousand, just at the just at the whole bait and then the, the Dadson's booth this yeah, morning. Yeah. So when I came in this morning, um, I had to do a presentation in the presentation room and I and I told Sean from Hold Baits, the holder, I said, Listen, can you hold a couple baits for me? And he said, Yeah, 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 I'll take care of you, I'll take care of you. Well, he didn't take care of me. So what happened was, I did my presentation, but you know who did take care of me? El Zinga. Steve El Zinga gave me a lure today to make up for hose bait. But anyways, he sent a lot of people up today. He's you know what? A lot of people really well. This is his first Odyssey, so he made a really. He told me he did really well. And you know what? The, the way feedback we're hearing on his base, by the way, is tremendous. Yeah. Well, his quality is yeah. incredible. But he knows everybody. He know, but he also has a history of musky lures. You ask him about a 1980 lure, and he will tell you about it. And he way before his time. He's not an older guy. Right. But he has the history of the Wishmasters and the Periwinkles, and he's got all this, you know, and knowledge of uh, the history, which cool. is so cool. You know, and you yeah. can see it in his bait because he puts a little bit of some of his baits have a little bit of blood there near the just under the lip. I noticed that. Yeah. That's an old periwinkle thing, I think. So he tries to keep those little traditions kind of alive and. You know, I hope he does fantastic. Good, yeah, no, I've seen him at the chapter meetings, and for anybody who's listening who is not a part of the chapter, great way to meet people, um, a great way to cut down uh, the guesswork when you're fishing for musky, which is hard enough to deal with, but, you know, if you go to these chapter meetings, there's amazing prizes to be won. Amazing. Yeah, right here. And, um, right but really, the chapters have these little side conversations. Yeah, with this guy or that guy no. that... Uh, Really, really help you, you know, in, in your day to days, and you find that that good golden nugget of information. It's a busy booth, everybody. Yeah, and we got a lot of stuff. Um, and, and, and the little bits of information, the little tips you'll get from, uh, you know, a guy like yourself or somebody else who's at the meeting. And just introducing yourself to people, and, and you're going to learn a hell of a lot by being a member of this chapter. Uh, this chapter, this association. Excuse me. Absolutely, and there's 14 chapters. Right now, there's 14 chapters. And there's uh, three provinces. Um, like we're sitting here right now, and John Bondi just walks by, yeah. and then we got, uh, you know, we got Tony Gallucci, Gazoo, who's been making beaver baits for so many years. Yeah. There's so much history, you know. As long as we don't lose that, you know, like. Um, but it was nice, you know. We have some American dealers came yeah. in this year, which is nice. And mix it up. They're fishing the same waters. Um, I know for a fact that uh, you and I share the a love for Eagle Lake. Absolutely, and I have you to thank for that. Yeah, and you know, you we're love, going there. We're going there. Well, we can't beat that place. I, I really believe that's where the big ones are. You do, right? Yeah, I do. And, and I saw, I saw some big fish when I was up there. They're there. And I've seen massive fish, and um, you know, like so. 
we have all these places that you know we go so you know we have these seminars and you learn a bit from this guy and a little bit from this guy something that maybe he didn't do and yeah. it's kind of funny when you start hearing so many people talk over the years and so many contradictions yeah isn't that yeah. because um like gord pies who didn't speak today but did speak at our musky sunday he 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 made some very valid points that musky fishing and musky fly fishing are the two fastest growing genres in freshwater fishing right now. Okay. Yeah. I was just going to ask you that, about the growth of the musky community, if you could speak to that a little bit. And, and I'm pleasantly surprised to hear that, I think. Well, my, my concern about that is, uh, okay, so we got, musky fishing has never been more popular than it is today. Release techniques, release tools, education has never been better than it is today. So a lot of people attribute that to more population, uh, people are releasing, fish are surviving, not like the old days when my dad used to hit them over the head with a bat, you know what I mean? Like limit those days are over. Limit restrictions are getting bigger and higher. Bigger. Yeah. And that's how you John, we had a conversation today with someone who said, back in the day, it was exactly what you said. Now today, the, the, the photo op is actually releasing the fish. It's, it's about releasing that fish, and that's your big photo op, showing that you're catching and releasing that back into the water, safe. And, right. and, and, and in the old days, you've seen a two-handed gill <laughs> yeah. for the fish is its head off and stuff like that. Yeah, and we don't that, show, that. that speaks to the evolution of the musky angler. Absolutely, and you know, um, I think it was one of the lenders who was talking once, and they were saying that when he was a kid, they used to sh bring a handgun out on the water with them and shoot them in the head. Like, these are not jokes. Edit. Can you imagine? Yeah, you know, like, what a waste, but that was just the way it is, and you know, times change, but, but now we got all this education, so where do we go from here? Yeah. So now we have all this education, and what I want to see as being the new president of Muskies Canada is I want to try and branch out in different directions. I've, you know, helped create the Wounded Warriors Project. Where we're asked, yeah, I saw your hat online. Was it yeah, a hat? It was a hat, Sweet. yeah. We have, uh, on August 25th, we have uh, about uh, 30, 40 uh, vets. We're taking them all off fishing for the day in Buckhorn. Uh, Scotsman's Point, who's a good friend of Muskies Canada, has donated the uh, the entire resort at an unbelievable uh, price. Which resort is that? Um, Scotsman's Point. Scotsman's Point. And we have the whole weekend, and I, we even got a beer sponsor. Uh, we got both breweries coming in. We're giving us all free beer for the weekend. Like, you just can't ask for better. So, what, what, I'm not saying that Muskie Canada needs to go to the beer room. But what I am saying is that we need to get out in different avenues and you know try and get our membership bigger. Right now our membership's around 700, 740. I think it should be much higher. But those are 740 die hard, who know how to release a fish, educated. Right. They paid their 50 bucks. They're members. They go. To, they might go to the meeting if they can. But they're there. What we need is we need the thousands and thousands of other fishermen that are fishing our waters for muskie that are not members of our club. Right. Right. Okay, so so if you're one of those guys, yeah, explain to us how they can get in touch and how, how they join Muskies Canada. And it's not that difficult really. At the end of the day, they just have to get on the website and sign up. And then you're part of a community that's going to be a shared knowledge base. It's going to enrich your experience as a fisherman and basically uh, make you grow and have more fun. You leverage the knowledge and you actually have more fun as a fisherman you do. than if you're doing it on your own. Let me just add that the forum on the Muskies Canada website is amazing. And from a guy who's a new boat owner, not only understanding the fish behavior and all the, all the help we need with musky, because we all need a lot of help. <coughs> Excuse me. But as a new boat owner, I have a lot of questions. And these guys, and I'm, I'm a dummy. I break things. I don't fix things. And I needed to be told a couple times what some of the solutions were. These guys were patient with me and were very, very uh, good in, in referring me and, and explaining to me how I needed to fix my trolling motor and some of the other problems, the gremlins I was having in my boat. This is a great, great group of people, right across the board. Yeah. What's 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 going on for 2017? Well, 2017, we got all our outings coming up. We have tons of outings, but getting back to the signing up. Yeah. Um, and I do agree with you that our forum is a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about it is, the only thing is, like, there's not a lot of guys that 
remember, we're talking about musky fishermen. Right. They're not computer guys. Yeah. In most cases, yeah. they're not. We're, we've learned that today. Yes, you're going to know <laughs> that. What's a podcast? What's a podcast? Okay. What's a podcast? Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, but but that's changing because there's a lot of there's a big youth movement. Exactly. This, is, this is what we're trying to reach out to. And, right? and and you know what? And the thing is, we're, we're doing what we can, but we're not trying to exclude the existing members that have been around a long time. They deserve our respect. They are our most valuable. Absolutely. So, let me tell you why I believe, and I'm going to say it straight out. I think if you're a muskie fisherman and you're in Canada, and you're not a member of Muskies Canada, you're foolish. I'm going to tell you why. I agree. I think you're foolish because there's so much information available to you, and let's face it, nobody is perfect. Um, but nobody more, knows everything. But more yeah, than that, yeah. um, you know, Frank Smith, he, um, you know, he doesn't have a boat. But he loves musky fishing. Join Muskies Canada. Go on the forum. Say, hey guys, who needs a net man? And all of a sudden, you've got lots of guys out there. you got lots of guys out there that are going out fishing and don't want to do it alone. And all of a sudden, you're meeting people. Andy Pallotta. Um, I didn't even see you here today. Because I've been walking around here. It's like pretty, pretty busy. Well, awesome. You know what? I'm so happy to see you. Thanks for coming. You know what? It's a, it was a great show. I even won door prize. You got a handlebar shirt. Woo! And I bought that, but I bought the door prize. I bought I won, I won on the door prize. They made you pay? Yeah. Handlebars? I'm pretty. I'm in business. They're all business. <laughs> yeah, you guys had a great show. Congratulations. Thank you so much, man. Right, have well, travel safe. Thanks, boy. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So you have, you have all these, uh, all this knowledge and 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 and. and the net man guy, the guy that fishes from shore, let me give you an example. I got a nice 16 foot regular aluminum boat, nothing special, but I got a place up on the French. Works perfect for me. Guy get everything done. I know the, like that part of the French, like works perfect for me. But my boat is not a big water boat. And my boat also doesn't have, I can't troll lure 70 feet deep. I'm not in that kind of water. So I meet a guy like Mike Parker. Mike Parker from Handlebars. We start talking, we're laughing, we're joking, we're talking about music, but we met through Muskies Canada. Mike's great. Mike yeah, Parker today, yeah. was the first guy to bring me on Lake St. Clair because he had a boat equipped to do so. He was such a nice guy. A year later, I get my I get a 53 and a 54 the same day with Mike. I would have never caught those fish if I never met him through Muskies Canada. Now, you got relationships that you build with all the bait makers. Guys are coming here. You got Joe Flo right here. He's coming from Quebec. You know, the guy's a legend out that way when it comes to fishing. You know, like, and he's here. And you respect him. He knows his stuff. He's the first guy I've been to. Well, you, you won't meet a better guy. Yeah. And this room's full of guys like that. So I assure you that if I went out that way and I was in his neighborhood and I got his shirts and his sweaters and I own everything that, from Joe Flo in his, his store, he would accommodate me and take me fishing. And that's the key. It's not just a club, it's a family.